thank you for coming along to listen to the band and the music and, and for sticking around to listen to me rave on about this. Uh, as Louis said, live electronics and acoustic improvisation in the jazz trio and exploration of interactivity in composition, performance and recording. And the title is something that I did spend a fairly large amount of time, it seemed for me, thinking about how this was going to play out and it, it really became about the compositions. And so in this project, the compositions my compositions are the central element that ties together all the other parts. So they're being explored through performances and recordings. And the improvisation that is part of these compositions is, is critical, but it's essentially a project um, based around new work. So what is this about? It is an artistic practices research project, and it involves, as you heard, this relationship between acoustic and, and electronic improvisation. I became really interested in how we could extend the, the possibilities of what we were doing in an acoustic trio. Uh, I'm a, a modern jazz musician, I suppose, and what that involves, I think, uh, and being a, a jazz musician in the 21st century is someone who assimilates a lot of influences from different points and is interested in different types of music and interested in the possibilities of where uh, jazz can go. Uh, and there's a great quote from uh, Duke Ellington, Gary Giddens, Cites it saying, uh, Ellington says, I don't know how such great extremes can exist under one heading as they do now. And that was in the 60s. <laughs> so uh, I think we've probably gone a little bit further than that. And so I'm quite interested in how we can, you know, as a trio, we can take this, these possibilities of, of uh, improvisation further.
uh, and why? I suppose it's going to give me new ways of writing, recording and performing. Uh, this format is, is a format that I've worked with in my professional career pretty extensively and we've done a lot of recording, a lot of performances and, and written and, and performed a lot of music that uh, blends improvisation and composition in, in different situations. So for me and for my collaborators, it's going to be a chance to really take our practice into a new direction. And it's definitely challenging for me as a composer, an improviser, a performer, but I hope challenging for these players as well and also will bring a new level of a kind of ability and um, performance style to what they do. That's the central research question to explore and analyse the composition, notation and performance of improvised music that engages acoustic and live electronic improvisation in the jazz trio. Through creation and investigation of trio music with these elements, the project examines conditions beneficial to creating effective musical experiences. So firstly, I just want to pick up on what this live electronic you know, improvisation is actually about, because for me it was something that I had to quite clearly define early on in, in when I began uh, this project. So it's, it's really about the live transformation and processing of acoustic sounds. Uh, it's not a uh, um, tape-led or, or responsive electronic system where we're playing against a computer program. It's very much based on the musicians manipulating and transforming their acoustic sounds in real time. There's no pre-recorded samples or extra musical samples involved.
to pick up on um, this Montreal based uh, composer and researcher Pierre Tremblay and he notes that um, the real value of practice based research is only accessible through the main outcome. The music must be relevant to the community and give you proposals, original questions and innovative answers. I really like that, that idea of creating innovative answers, so innovating ways of, of, kind of coming at these new situations that you've created for yourself through your music. Uh, the core outcomes of this, of course, new work, uh, recordings and performances, a series of recordings with the two different trios and a series of performances. Heightened musical experiences for participants because I'm, you know, all of the musicians that are involved in this project, myself included, are thoroughly studied, practiced, experienced improvisers on their instrument in an acoustic sense. So extending this by adding these new interactive um, ways of playing their acoustic instrument and creating these live electronic sounds is a new experience for them. So what I am hoping an out a core outcome is this heightened musical experience for them. Uh, I refine my compositional language because I'm really going to need to change and adapt the way I write to integrate uh, these live electronic sounds. I don't want the music to be written and then these kind of manipulations sat on top of it. They very much need to be a part of the, the fabric, the composition and the improvising structure. Uh, and extensions of improvisational technique. I'll pick up a little bit on this uh, when I talk about um, my literature review because the physicality of it is quite important. You know, we're all engaging with um, things outside of our instrument. And so this is causing us to change and extend the way we improvise physically, which is quite important. So hopefully it gives us new skills for how we can um, manipulate ourselves and our instrument. And lastly, the, the development of scores, because I want this to be reproducible um, by a number of groups. So uh, I'll be working on systems to you know, tape this in a way that's clear for the musicians, uh, in a way that's repeatable. I've broken the literature review up into three uh, clear sections, influential artists, live performance examples, uh, and inspirational texts. So let's just take a look through each of those. When I put this little thought bubble together of my influential artists, I did then sit back and go, oh, right, most of them are Northern Europeans, uh, which is not probably, it's not an accident, definitely not. Uh, it points to probably the aesthetic uh, considerations and also the stylistic considerations that are present in my music already and probably uh, the direction I want to take it. So there's, there's a, a prevalence of that at this point and there's also a prevalence of that sound uh, and this type of playing in, in some of the music that's being made in that part of the world. That's not to say this is uh, the end, obviously, of my artistic reference points. It's the starting point. <laughs>
some of my inspirational texts are Derek Bailey's you know, seminal work, Improvisation is Nature and Practice in Music, where he discusses improvisation in various forms of music and various styles. Uh, and a really important part of that text for me is the chapter on the music improvisation company, a uh, group that he formed in the late 60s, which involves the use of live electronics. And Hugh Davies, the laptop musician in this, talks about how in that group they were looking for sounds that were not associated with traditional music. And they were trying to use them to extend the music forwards and backwards. And for me, that's an interesting concept of how these sounds can take the music into a new place or kind of bring it back deeper into, into itself and remove elements of the sound. And they also note, uh, as part of their, their practice in creating this music, that they highly valued free improvisation. And I noticed that a lot of these groups and a lot of the artistic influence points for me have placed a heavy value on free improvisation as an exploration um, method for this type of uh, music making. Uh, Sarah Nichols, a uh, British uh, researcher and composer and piano player, uh, has got a great piece in the Leonardo Music Journal, seeking out the spaces between using improvisation in collaborative composition with interactive technology. And in fact, her research um, since 2007 has really deeply involved the use of piano and live electronics. Uh, and she's interested in creative, creating responsive performance environments at the piano. Um, using improvisation as a methodology for interacting with technology in a meaningful way. So she also explores a lot of these questions of physicality. She's quite interested in how this can happen from a physical space. So her piano lab, a research centre called the Piano Lab, is set up very much with the piano in the central location and then a variety of live electronic uh, situations around it so that she can test uh, these different ways of creating sound in different pieces of music. Um, she also says to have the performer improvise with technology means to unlock an inner physical language, to find both what is possible and natural, but also what is unnatural, or outside the natural body language, which for me as a piano player is definitely relevant, uh, reaching in and manipulating the iPad and pushing buttons here and there is very unnatural to my normal way of improvising. So uh, these are questions to be explored, and I think for all the players, this is a very unnatural way of improvising. Uh, Pune Arce, who's a Norwegian singer and researcher, uh, has done a lot of work in research in voice, live electronics, and improvised interplay. And it was great to come across a singer because the other trio involves vocals. So I've been reading a lot of her work, which I identify with quite strongly, and she talks about using live electronics as a disconnect from rhythm, melody, and harmony. So using it to completely separate uh, from the normal musical structures and using sound as the central piece of musical material. She's heavily influenced by free jazz, avant-garde rock, uh, Western classical music in, in creating her you know, modern, modern jazz. Um, and she also says that the, imp uh, the electronic processing, and she's, she's uh, primarily a duo with percussion and voice, and um, she says it creates distance from and transformation of the natural vocal sound. Which, and I was really interested in this distance from, you know, how far can you take it from the natural acoustic sound that we, we hear all the time. But she also, in the duo um, with percussion, they play 100% improvised material, but she also plans for some of these improvised scenarios. They don't compose them, but they do plan for them. And she has four key areas to plan. That being broadening, so adding to the sound. Narrowing, so filtering the frequencies and, and kind of sonic areas. Placing, so putting the sound in a different space, and reconstructing, so changing the sound. So by using these different categories, she's able to use the live electronics to uh, take the music to these different areas.
do have three sub-questions that are going to help me answer the main research question. Uh, firstly, what software and physical control is there effective for performance to enhance their acoustic improvisations? And I mean, a lot of that, where the, the kind of literature review and looking at these influential artists is really important to see what's, what people are using and how, what their effect they're getting out of it. But also for us, testing different uh, pieces of equipment. This is not the type of project where I'll be trying to find every piece of equipment and test it. It's very much about selecting some and seeing if they're effective in creating the type of musical experiences that we want. And if they are, we'll be using them. Uh, secondly, what extended sound capabilities are effective for the jazz trio instrumentation of piano based drums and piano voice and saxophone? Some of these uh, live electronic sounds, manipulations of the acoustic sound are going to really work for what the you know, ensembles do and some of them are, are not. They might be great ideas and great sounds in their own right, but as a collective, it's not going to work. So uh, it's an important question as to what kind of sound capabilities can transform our sound and how they can be used to create core musical content, like rhythm, melody, and harmony, and how they can create more kind of textual and dynamic um, kind of music areas. Lastly, how can contemporary music notation include the application of live electronics and acoustic improvisation? Uh, even for us today, uh, playing some of this stuff, because uh, there's so many possibilities with how we can use these live electronics in an improvised sense, we're wanting to write some of these down so that we remember what we're using and where and when. And so I would need to work out some type of system that is going to help this be reproducible by the same players or by a different group of players. Uh, it's, it's important that, this, that these works are repeatable uh, by different players. So how can I create a notation system that draws on elements of jazz notation, lead sheets? I don't really want to start creating uh, huge scores uh, for these type of musicians who are used to playing off a fairly uh, brief lead sheet. But, we, but it still needs to be detailed enough, and it may include elements of pictorial and graphic story, scoring or directional scoring. <laughs> Thank you. 
research methods. Uh, it's an artistic practices research project, as I said, uh, and it's based on a flexible design approach, so that being uh, the researcher is a participant, that being me, and uh, there's participant observation by musicians, and there's multiple qualitative data collection points. And this is over a period of time where I'll be interviewing people and, and watching videos of us playing and also conducting some, some structured observations. It's also autoethnographic auto in which I'm a critical participant of this. And I also want to say uh, that you know, Dala Crispin's article, Artistic Scholarship and Music Research, was really useful for me because she talks about three clear stages of artistic practice as research. She says, you can have artistic practice as input, and then artistic practice as process, and artistic practice as output, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. I mean, it's starting with the input, this is the work as it stands. It's going to be a key part of the process as to how it's transformed, and then the key outcome, the artistic uh, work itself. Uh, so from that, I kind of worked out four stages for me. The investigation of live electronics, interviews and analysis of, of key artists and their work, uh, creation of new work for the two trios and performance and recording of that, and then the reflective practice of these experiences. The interviews and analysis with key artists, um, these are the artists that are currently practicing acoustic and live electronic improvisation. And a lot of these interviews hopefully will be in person or, or you know, via Skype and those types of things. Obviously, I will be broad in terms of trying to access artists from outside of Australia, but also Australian practitioners. And these will be semi-structured, open-ended interviews covering concepts that include the weight of live electronics in their music, reasons for hardware and software selection, compositional and improvisational process, live as studio. I'm really interested in how you know, they would do this work live and what they would change in a studio environment. Would they be multi-tracking things or would they be freed up to create different sounds because it's not um, live? And also their ensemble approach. You know, how do they transfer this to the other musicians and how do the other musicians uh, interact? And the third stage, the creation of new work. Uh, what I tried to put together here was just the compositional methods down one side and then how I would collect the data from this on the other side. Um, so it's planning, sketching, workshopping, refining, notational systems and re test recording. That's the kind of all the pre-live stage. And the data collection would involve research journals, uh, sketches of compositions and impro, impro frameworks, photos and videos of setups, um, video recordings of the trio workshopping material, um, open-ended participant interviews with the musicians, uh, scores, video recordings, and test recordings and things like that. Uh, and then when we get to the live performance and the studio recordings, obviously a series of performances, the recordings of these uh, live sessions and the studio sessions. Uh, the structure, it'll involve two sections. The first part will be the folio, uh, which will include the scores of the works, the performances, recordings, and the notes on the process of these. Progress to date, uh, well, as I said, both these bands are working groups, so that's quite fortunate and important, as I said, so that there is a kind of natural improvising and musical relationship existing with the musicians. And also developing technical skill for me in terms of using some of these programs so that I can assist the other musicians. Uh, a lot of listening to the key artists and reflecting on what they're doing and what sounds uh, I think are working in that I could use in my music. It's very much an extension of the music that I, I write and I, and I still want it to be uh, the direction that's important and kind of reflective of what I do. And I've got a conference presentation at the Rhythm Changes Conference, Jazz Utopia in Birmingham in April. So as soon as I finish this today, I'd better get started.